not going on forever here. Welcome. Today is Sunday something. What date is it? It's May 10th. Oh, it's Mother's Day. Good for you guys coming. It's Mother's Day. Don't forget. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I need to call my mother. Huh, thank goodness I'm my wife. Good idea. Okay, Elder Wright, you say the opening prayer, please. Since you're tormenting us, I'm going to make you do everything today. <laughs> okay. Mm. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this time that we have today to meet together on Zoom and to learn and grow. Father, please bless that we may fill thy spirit, that we may come closer unto thee. Please bless those missionaries around the world who are still serving and those who are preparing to go out again or to serve for the first time, please. Bless them with strength and health and the desire to go and do thy work. Father, we thank thee for all the many blessings that we have been given, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you very much. Um, our official teacher's not here, so I'm going to be the official teacher until the official teacher shows up, he or she. I won't tell you who it is, but I know that it'll turn out just fine. I wanted to start off today by asking you a question, and I want your participation on this one. Um, last March, just a month and a half ago, President Atwood gave me a long email, and, a, and he called me um, over the email. I was not called uh, like, like by phone. Maybe I was but not face to face. I haven't seen my state presidency forever. And he said, we have a bunch of missionaries coming home at the end of March, which you all did, which is just an absolute shock to the system. It should be because going on a mission is hard. Uh, you, you, you mentally got to get ready to go. You spiritually got to get ready to go physically, monetarily, all these things have to happen. So here's my question. Why do you think that president Atwood called this meeting this missionary devotional to happen what what is the purpose of these missionary devotionals that's my question elder Mannion. so i just think it has a lot to do with helping us um stay in the mindset of the mission you know keep us focused on what's important because that's our goal right that's why we're here to either go out like immediately or wait, you know, whatever it takes. Um, it's designed, I think, just to help us be ready for that and to kind of leave stronger than we came. So to help you to get stronger than you are, who else? Why, why is President Atwood, why, why is this his way of helping you? Sister Shock. I think oh, it does a lot. Like, we, first of all, it brings the spirit to us almost every other day, which is awesome, which we should be seeking out on our own too. But if you weren't, at least you're getting this. And then also, I think it helps me keep my mind missionary focused because there's a lot of like druggy stuff here. And so <laughs> it mm -hmm. can be easy to like get distracted, but it keeps my mind missionary focused. It keeps me studying, preach my gospel. And I also think it's really important to continue teaching. Like in the mission, we would do a practice every single day, um, practicing teaching someone. And so I think it's really good to continue to teach. I'm going to follow up with that question. By the way, I want y'all jumping in and helping. The question is, why are we doing these missionary devo Why are we doing these missionary devotionals? Why didn't President Atwood? And I think he watches these videos, by the way. So I'm very careful, President Atwood, on the questions I asked. Um, why didn't he just say, "Hey"? Guys and gals, I want you in your scriptures and preach my gospel alone every day. Why not just do this alone? Elder Wright? Well, I think missionary work is supposed to be done in groups. We have our companions. We go out and teach others. And then also you get other people's opinions. Whereas if we're doing things by ourselves, then we kind of have one mindset. This question is not only for missionary devotionals, but um, our church has a lot of meetings. <laughs> um, how do you get the most out of the missionary devotionals, you personally? Or, not, not, or another way of asking that question, what should you be doing to get the most out of it? Or, or, or sacrament meeting or anything else? Elder Jackson Peck. Uh, I feel like participating more helps me. 
Um, it's interesting you say that because you're you're one of the more sober, quiet guys. Sober, by the way, not mm-hmm. meaning non-alcoholic, meaning that that uh, you are just you know just steady. You, you know you're. You're not like me. I, I have to take my medications before these meetings because I, well, I don't take medications, but you, you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm hyper. I, I can't help it. I, I say things that I, that I shouldn't. And um, I'm gonna, this is a follow-up question to you, Jackson. How do you um, participate when you don't say much? And that's for everybody that doesn't say much, okay? Okay, so for me, I've, I've never really talked much, like you said, mm-hmm. even whether it's sports or whatever, just like, just by being focused, like actually paying attention to what's going on always, you know, like even if I'm not talking, just like, you know, asking the question to myself in my head, just doing what I'm supposed to. Excellent. Yeah. So I can ask a question and hopefully it'll kind of go in the deep recesses of your, your mind. Um, would you open up your scriptures with me to second Nephi 28? Let's go to verse 30. Elder Wright, get ready to read. Since you're going to the Carlsbad mission, we're going to be picking on you today, okay? Until I hit it right, you're going to keep, you're my main reader. 2 Nephi 28, verse 30. Okay. For behold, let's say the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men line upon line, precept upon precept. Here little and there little. And blessed are those who hearken unto my precepts and lend an ear unto my counsel. For they shall learn wisdom. For unto him that receiveth, I will give more. From them that shall say, we have enough. From them shall be taken away even that which they have. Now read it to yourself again, everybody. And as you're reading it, ask, okay, how does this apply to the missionary devotionals? That We're on number 15 right now, by the way. How does this apply to the missionary devotionals? And raise your hand when you'd like to participate. Elder Mannion. So I really love this scripture. Um, It's really well known for the line upon line precept Mm -hmm. precept part, right? Um, But I kind of realized at the bottom, there's a bigger promise that says, I will give more and from them that which that say we have enough from them shall it be taken away. So it's kind of ties into humility too, right? So us as missionaries, we could all probably say we understand the gospel. We're out teaching it, right? We have to. And that's a kind of a gateway where we can become a little bit arrogant to things. And so this applies two ways, I think, um, how we can learn line upon line, precept upon precept, upon precept. And we should be really careful never to go in the place where we feel like we already understand it all. And when we, when we tell ourselves that, that's going to close us off from the, the extra information, extra knowledge that God's going to give us. Um, it it most it. definitely will close you off. Who else has a thought on this? How does this? Sister Levitt? Well, just thinking about it, um, learning, like, so often you think that you have to learn from, like, a classroom environment, but God's teaching us through so many ways, through so many people around us. So you got to be looking for these opportunities to learn because he's sending us opportunities all the time, even in daily conversations with families. So we got to be prepared and looking for these opportunities because God does teach that way, line upon line, precept upon precept. And he teaches that through the people we meet, through classes like this and through the scriptures. So we got to keep doing those things. Well put. I'm going to give you three examples. And by the way, if you have a comment, go ahead and raise your hand again, okay? Uh, I'm going to give you three examples on this line-by-line concept. How many of you, by show of hands, know how to code? All right, good. See, I told you I was going to pick on you today since you're going to the Seattle North Mission. Oh, go. You're hopeless. He won't tell us where he's going. That's why I'm picking on him. All right, what is coding all about? Um... The lines of code, the little functions, the little call things. Is there a program where there's only one line of code? No. How many lines are there? Thousands. Right. And 
again, that's one analogy that the, the way that we're talking right now on Zoom was put together by some computer whiz and line upon line wrote this code so that we can somehow see each other right now and do it. Question number two, example number two, how many of you love to read? I mean, really love to read. Okay, Elder Wright, sorry, Elder Hallstrom, you're second, okay? And Elder Shock, you're third. I mean, Sister Shock, you're third. Elder Wright, what do you like to read as you're getting ready for the Pittsburgh mission that you're going to? Uh, um, to be honest, I love fantasy, but also the scriptures. Excellent. Elder Hallstrom, what do you read? Um, what do I read? Uh, well, I actually read a lot from classics and um, a lot of historian kind kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. some fit into it. Also, scripture. Yeah. Sister Shock, what's your what's your reading? I love the scriptures and I love historical fiction and fantasy. Um, have you noticed that when you read that line upon line, the story just gets incredibler and more incredible than, than, than possible. Again, I'm, I'm using these analogies to, to drive home a point here right now. Uh, and I'm going to pause right here on my, before my third analogy. Um, I, know what it, I know the effort it takes to go to mission prep. I know the, take, the effort it takes to go on a mission. I've done it. I know what the effort it takes to come to these missionary devotionals, nine o'clock in the morning, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And these line upon line things happen. And, and it, it, it's more and more, you get more and more inside of you. And, and it's interesting. The Lord would use only a line. He doesn't use like blocks. Um, it's just a little bit. My third example, um, have any of you ever seen those um, CAT scans where they will go slicing through the brain to take all these pictures of the brain, and it's just absolutely um, fascinating. Um, I want to show you something. By the way, our topic today is humility. We're going to get into humility. Nobody leave. Look at look at the picture for a minute. Just a minute. Okay, who who got up and went somewhere? Okay, good. I'm glad you stopped. Just a minute. Um, I'm going to get to my normal background on this one because I need to re I don't want you to see my messy office and all my CDs and all my books and things like that here. I want to reiterate something that I really, really believe in, that, that I have been like, I've, I've tried to condense everything I know about the gospel into this, this, do you guys remember this a little bit? If you see inside, it says conversion. This is a megaphone, and the megaphone is upside down, sorry. And the way I view everything in life with knowledge, that's the L part, the learning the gospel, gaining the intelligence, to the application, living the gospel principles, and the believing, feeling the Holy Ghost, to me, started off small. And then throughout my life, it, it got larger and larger and larger and larger. And I make sure, and this is kind of my challenge to you, that you never take for granted the stuff that you're learning, the stuff that you're applying, and the stuff that you're believing. That no matter what the meeting is, even if something as simple as this, there's only, how many of us today? Ten of us today out of the entire stake that are in this meeting. And I promise you that as you come to these meetings or you go to your priest and relief signing meetings or, you, or Sunday school or, or institute or whatever you do, that Heavenly Father is going to give you one more line. And a lot of times you won't be able to tell um, how, how wonderful um, your testimony continues to grow. I kind of view it like the old version of who wants to be a millionaire. Do you remember that they started off low and they got bigger and bigger and bigger and they finally got to that plateau where that, that it was like the $32,000 mark. And that once they got to that plateau, it was kind of like a, like a foundational piece. And that's what I want you folks to continue to do as you're, you're continually growing, most of you are going to be out of here pretty soon. Um, Jonathan Beck, June 8th. Brianne Crandall, June 1. Uh, Lucy Haslam, she's history. Garrison, June 2nd, correct? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're out of here. Uh, Steel Mannion, oh no, oh no. 512, this is it, buddy. Um, Spencer Stokes, 522. Sydney Shock. 
is going to be with me forever, June 22nd. And now don't ask me why they're waiting so long. I guess they got to get ready for you, you know. Uh, Jonathan Wright going to the Chicago, Illinois mission is probably leaving in three weeks. Okay, what's the date you're leaving? Oh, 8th of June. Okay. By the way, I'm going to hit it one of these days and we're going to find out where you are. That's kind of my preamble today for what I want to talk about, about this, this line upon line. And let me tell you one of the principles that really helps in this, in getting the most out of the missionary devotionals and everything else that we're doing. Would you go to preach my gospel? And let's go to page 126. And it is uh, humility, wherever you are in your book. Okay. Elder Wright, do you have that? <laughs> Until you tell me where you're going to go, you're going to be praying, singing, and reading. <laughs> Ooh, singing. That sounds like fun. <laughs> I know where you live. I'm going to call your mom and dad today. Oh, wait, they don't know either. Hey, would you nope. mind reading that, reading that paragraph under humility for us, please? Humility is willingness to submit to the will of the Lord and to give the Lord the honor for what is accomplished. Stop. It includes. Stop. I can't take any more. I want to talk about that one sentence. Read it to yourself again and give me your feelings on that one sentence. Not you, Elder Wright. You're off the hook. Two incredible concepts topped into this thing. Who has their feelings on this one? They'd like to tell me more about this. Sister Shock, thank you. So for this, this makes me think of like learning Portuguese because I learned it really, really quickly. I left the MTC speaking Portuguese and everyone would always be like, but you're American, how do you speak Portuguese? And I would always be like, because Heavenly Father helped me. And I, can, I totally know that's true. And I know that when we like forget that God is helping us, that we're not going to be the kind of people we want to be. Like, it's really fun to be around a humble person. It's not fun to be around a prideful person. And so, um, have you been around any missionaries in your mission that were the exact opposite of this? I know it's a negative way of doing it. Does somebody want to share an experience where you've been around an, an elder or sister who thinks that, Hey, I got a 36 on my ACT. I'm the smartest missionary ever. Just look at me. Any any horror stories? Go ahead, uh, Elder Wright, and then Sister Shock, and then Elder Peck Jackson. And it's Sister bad Levitt. for taking so much time. So funny enough, I'll throw myself under the bus. So my first companion, um, he was acting a little stuck up, I'd say. So we had our little companionship inventory. And I told him as much. I said, well, you know what? I feel you're a little prideful. He looked at me and he said, you know what? You're a lot like me. I think you could work on it as well. <laughs> so we both studied humility that week. And then afterwards, it was just a competition. Who could be the most humble? So we tried <laughs> to be kind to one another. And honestly, that changed my whole mission. That one little experience. I'm not done with you, Johnny. What? What is the big deal about being humble when the Lord may have blessed you with gift of tongues? What's the big deal about it? Because humility helps those around you as well. And then also people, they like you more when you're more humble. And you can connect with people more. People, when we read books, and we were talking about that earlier, we don't want a character who can do everything, who's perfect. We want someone we can relate to. Good answer. Sister Levitt, you're next. I saw the other hands too. Sister Levitt, you're up. Um, so when I got placed, I was in a trio for my MTC experience. And that was you, kind did of Did you like that? No, not one bit. I, I was like so excited too when I heard I was going to be in a trio. I'm like, this is going to be so fun. And it was not what I expected. And I was, and I like, I was kind of bitter about it because I was like, I thought we were going to have so much fun. We were all going to get along and everything. And we were all going to like agree and it was going to be great. 
but I could not agree with this one sister for the life of me. And then the other one would just kind of be like, she just like agree with whoever she felt with at the time. She didn't have a standard side. And so I just found myself constantly like trying. And I realized, I'm like, why is the point of like arguing about how to get this done when we should just get it done? Does it really matter the way? Mm -hmm. um, and I think both of us needed to work on it a bit and I realized that I just needed to kind of just um, let go a little bit and not be so like prideful and not be so my way or the highway because it's not my way it's the Lord's way I'm on the, a mission for the Lord I'm not on a mission for me so I need to start acting like it and I needed to change my perspective on that good pit but point Jackson Peck, did you have your hand up? Yes. So for me, there was like, there are some people, they, so they know like everything about the scriptures, everything. And if you don't really know them, they'll kind of make, make you feel kind of stupid. But for me, instead of that, I just kind of understood that's just kind of their culture. It's where they come from. So instead, I just tried to learn from them. I just had empathy for them. That, you know, they're not trying to make you feel stupid. It's just kind of, where they come from is how they, you know, talk. So actually helped me in the end learn a lot. Good input. Elder Hallstrom, did you have your hand up? Um, I did not, but yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I think that uh, there's been several times on my mission where um, I've definitely had to like um, just be humble, you know, the Ipcluin, which is to shorten yourself, and that's kind of like the word for humbling yourself. Um, and anyway, so, uh, and for me, I kind of, in my companionships, I kind of had, I think my flaw was that I was always kind of like, a, I like to play opposites, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like to, like, uh, if, if, for example, if a companion wasn't that great at talking, the people I would be kind of like that companion, right, for for the thing, um, and so in some ways that kind of made a lot of like problems for me. In and so sometimes I just had to kind of like I had some really good talks with my companions and um, just be humble and be able to like appreciate each other's skill sets. Um, but at the same time, I've also had companions who like thought they were just great missionaries and yet there was just kind of obvious things that they didn't do like talk to everybody and whatnot mm -hmm. and so i always thought that um i always kind of just thought to myself that that is something that um like this is a part of putting yourself out there right is to just mm -hmm. be humble and just yeah lay lay everything on the line that makes sense it makes sense and i appreciate your comments any other comments Elder Wright, open up your book again. Oh, Sister Shock, everybody, we're going to be back on Preaching the Gospel in a minute. Go ahead, Sydney. Okay, so I was just thinking about this line, how it says, humility is willingness to submit to the will of the Lord. Because I think there's like another way of being prideful of it um, that I do too. And that's kind of like when you're scared to like follow the will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And like, I think I felt that a lot on my mission, like really inadequate. Like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And that's like, that's pride too, because you're not trusting in God to help you. And you're not wanting to do his will. It's so like some people hate transfers because they feel like mm -hmm. super stressed out about it. Like Heavenly Father's not going to help them. And I think that would be part of pride too, is, is realizing that it's not just you on the mission. And it also says, and to give the Lord the honor for what is accomplished. So like a lot of times we don't even see what's accomplished. And sometimes we get really down about that, but we need to just trust in the Lord and be humble, be patient that he's going to like, he's going to magnify our efforts and that will be like glory to him. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of humility too. Excellent. Sister Levitt. Um, just going off of that, it just kind of made me think of my own experience, not necessarily with being out on a mission, but just with the whole waiting process. It has been like a struggle for me and it's just because I want to get it out there so bad. And I've had to learn that 
much patience and I've had to learn that humility that I'm here for the Lord and I need to be patient about it that it'll come in its own time and sometimes you just need to sit and learn and right now this has definitely been a learning period to me about how I can be more humble and how I can be a better missionary yeah isn't how I wanted my mission to turn out isn't what I was expecting and it's just this whole ride has been difficult but I'll get there eventually and I'm just learning that and learning that I'm doing this for the Lord I'm not doing this for myself because when I definitely first like wanted to go on a mission it was like oh I'm gonna be a missionary it wasn't about the people I was gonna make friends with the people in Lubbock Texas it was about me but the more I'm going through this the more I'm learning about it's the people I want to be there for the people not for me how long were you in Lubbock Texas <laughs> not even not even one day. I this never is, even got to the airport. <laughs> this this is the only sister in our group that hasn't actually hit hit the mission field, and here she is at home, like a thoroughbred in a race, just waiting to get out. I uh, went for an interesting ride yesterday with a friend, and we went over to Pleasant Grove. And you know, in the state of Utah, in order for you to get hard liquor, you have to go to the liquor stores. And this friend lives over in Pleasant Grove, so he goes on. It's Pleasant Grove Boulevard. Uh, and he goes on that all the time. And this is like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. The line was out the door from the liquor store. And he says, it's never like this, but he says during this, uh, this COVID-19, um, liquor sales are up 50%. Why do I tell you that? I tell you that is because I know how Sister Levitt's feeling right now. Um, Satan wants us to feel uh, there's, no, there's, there's no hope right now. And uh, I, I love all of you for turning towards the Lord. Don't turn to alcohol. <laughs> turn towards the Lord, and it's all going to work out. Um, I have a great story. I want to, by the way, any other comments? Sorry, I'm, I'm dominating this. Uh, we will get back to preaching my gospel right now, and then I'm gonna we're gonna go to judges. But let's let's go to humility first, and go ahead and read it for us there. Elder Wright going to the Florida Tallahassee mission. Elder Wright. Oh go. Okay, would you read the next all the way to the paragraph where we're in self self selflessly? Um, and I'll start from the beginning again. Yep. Humility is willingness to submit to the will of the Lord and to give the Lord the honor for what is accomplished. It includes gratitude for his blessings and acknowledgement of your constant need for his divine help. Humility is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of spiritual strength. When you humbly trust him and acknowledge his power and mercy, you can have the assurance that his commandments are for your good. You are confident that you can do whatever the Lord requires of you if you rely on him who are also willing to trust his chosen servants and follow their counsel. Humility will help you as you strive to be obedient, to work hard, and to serve selflessly. If you know your relationship to Heavenly Father, you're a humble person. And uh, that doesn't mean that Heavenly Father wants to take away your spiritual gifts. Uh, some of you have the gift of tongues. Some of you don't. Some of you have the gift of faith. Some of you don't. And that doesn't mean that you should not acknowledge those things. It's not that you... You, um, you, 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 you shout from the pulpit, I'm a humble person. The minute you start saying you're a humble person is you're no longer a humble person. <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting. It's got to be a very personal thing. Would you open up in your Old Testament to Judges? Judges chapter 6. And I'm gonna. We're gonna start with chapter six. Just this. Just the heading of chapter six. Who's got that? And who's in the mood to read? I'm not gonna pick on Elder Wright anymore for a minute. Not until I'm really grumpy. Who's got that? Judges six. The heading. Go okay. ahead, Elder Hallstrom. Go ahead. Okay, Israel is in bondage to the Midianites. An angel appears to Gideon and calls him to deliver Israel. He overthrows the altar of Baal. The spirit of the Lord rests upon him, and the Lord gives him a sign to show he is called to deliver Israel. Okay, 
as we read this, I want you to apply it to your own situation right now. This is a very fascinating story. Israel's the church, the Midianites, the enemy. And how many Midianites were there? Go to verse 5 for me, Elder Hallstrom. Okay. Um, so they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. Uh, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. Okay, again, this is application time. This is going to be a really fascinating scripture to th thinking, what, what's going on right now? The, there were so many of the people out in the world, the, the Midianites, that they were as like grasshoppers. And if you've ever seen a field of grasshoppers, they're everywhere. In fact, they're camels. They couldn't even number their camels. There were so many of them. You would think that the Lord, in his common sense, and by the way, I'm using my words carefully because the Lord does not have to have common sense. You would think that the Lord in his common sense would say, you know what? I need to get more Israelites. It's got to be tit for tat. It's got to be, if they got a million, we got to get a million. That's not what the Lord did. This is really quite fascinating. And this is what is happening to our missionary force right now. Now, let's jump over to chapter 7. And Elder Hallstrom, you're still going to be my reader. Would you go with me now to verse 2? All right. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with me, with thee, are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. We're talking about humility today. Gideon's the leader. And the Lord is very clear. He says, you have a huge army, man. This is sweet. You, you got, you got 70,000 missionaries out there. That's great. Again, application for what we're doing right now. And what was the Lord's concern? What did he say in this? Read it again to yourself and tell me what, what, what was the Lord's worry? I love the Old Testament because the language is very old. <laughs> the last line, go ahead, Johnny Wright. So um, God is saying, um, lest the people say, mine own hand have saved me. So basically he's saying, we're going to cut your army down to size so that there's no way at all that you guys could win without my help so that you guys can't say that it was your strength of arms or numbers, but it is I, the Lord. Exactly. The Lord is saying, I'm going to do something here, and I want you to make sure that you understand it's by my power, not yours. So this is what he does. Go to verse 3, Elder Hallstrom. You're still my reader. All right. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. Okay, so how many did they start off with? I want to see my AP students in this class. How many people were starting off in the army? That's correct, Johnny Wright. 32,000. And uh, the Lord says, Listen. In verse 3, if you're fearful, you're afraid, because the Midianites are as numbered like grasshoppers, go home. It's okay. It, it, there's no shame in it. Go home. Everything's cool. So 10,000 were left. Now, do you remember the story started off that the Midianites were as numerous as the grasshoppers, that the camels could not even be numbered? And here's the Lord doing the exact opposite of what common sense would say. He's saying, Gideon, go to your troops, go to your missionaries, and say, listen, if you're fearful and you're afraid, you can go home. And now we're left with only 10,000. The Lord keeps talking. Elder Hallstrom, verse 4. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So here's the Lord. Now he's going to test these 10,000. Takes them down to water because they're all thirsty. And he gives them a test. Verse um, 5, Elder Hallstrom. 
Uh, so he brought down the people onto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth up the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him, thou, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that bows, boweth down upon his knees to Gideon. You guys have been on camping trips before, and you've been hiking, and there's no water. I know, I don't care if you're in the Uintas, you do not go down to the water and lap it up. You have your, your, your canteens that have the filters, correct? Well, this is what happened. The Lord said, go down, and I want you to watch all those people that get down there and lap like a dog, okay? And then I want you to watch the guys. Sorry, there's no women. Sorry, Sister Levin, Sister Shock. They left them home to do whatever they did there. For the people that kneeled on their knees and took the water and put it to their mouth, you put them in a team. Who did the Lord want? The dog lappers or the people kneeling and picking up the water with their hands? Why is that, Sister Shock? Because I feel like it's, I think it's cleaner and more polite. So. I, don't, I don't know the Old Testament reason, but that's a good reason. I'm going to like that. In fact, I'm going to put that in my <laughs> Elder Hodge, what do you think? I know exactly what it is. Oh, cool. If you're, if you're drinking down, you're not um, aware of your surrounding. If you're going like this, you can keep your eyes up for bad guys. You've read your Old Testament. You may go home now. Oh, wait, you're home. <laughs> the Lord was looking to see, as Elder Hodge has said, who's, who's alert. See, when you go down, you lap like a dog. You don't know if somebody's going to come behind you and stab you with a sword. Or they're going to attack you, whatnot. And he was looking for the people that, that knew how to get prepared for the battle that lied ahead. This is really cool how the number went down. Would you go to verse 7 now? We're, we are in chapter 7, verse 7. And 7 and 8, Elder Hallstrom. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he set all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent entertained those 300 men and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. We're done reading out of judges. Uh, judges. Started off, how many Midianites were there? As numerous as grasshoppers. How many camels were they had? They had so many camels, the Midianites, the enemy had so many camels, they couldn't count them. And they had a pretty good sized army. 32,000 people is the conference center filled up once and a half. That's a pretty good army. Then, they reduced the army down to the Mormon type. Oh, it's what is it? The, the Tabernacle Choir, formerly known as the Memorial Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square in Salt Lake City. There's 360 seats up there for the Tabernacle Choir. So 60 of those people didn't get to stay around. Two conference centers almost filled, down to 300. Without looking at the end of the story, did they did the did the Israel win or did they lose? You guys go look at it. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. I want a W right now. Is that a W? There's a W. They won. Okay, this is not a personal attack on anybody that you know, okay? But Heavenly Father right now is trying to find his 300 people uh, to go back out. Six, we got 16 million members. It's a drop in the bucket to the 7.8 billion, billion people that are on the earth. The, the, the world is like grasshoppers, and we have hardly any missionaries, and, and the entire half the missionary force is home trying to stay worthy, trying to not get so freaked out that it's going on. Now, Sister Levitt, you know what I love about Sister Levitt today is she's saying exactly what's been in my heart, too, like, when's this going to end? This is ridiculous. Who's in charge here? <laughs> well, the Lord is, and he's looking for people that are going to get humble enough and say, you know what? I'm going to do it thy way now. I am not the prophet, but me and the prophet, we're like this. And I guarantee you that something is great in, in store right now as we get ready for the second coming. I don't know what it is. I, I wonder if there's going to be more of an internet presence where we could do more with the internet. I don't know. Um, is that are we going to be start buying big uh, advertisements on TV and advertise so the missionaries don't have to go out anymore? I don't know. But I know that Heavenly Father wants you folks to 
to, to, to continue to um, be ready and know that everything is in the Lord's hands, that you don't need to worry. Let's, let's continue. Elder Johnny Wright, do you still have your Preach My Gospel? Um, would you continue to read that last paragraph for me, please, for all of us? The opposite of humility is pride, which is condemned in the scriptures. To be prideful means to put greater trust in oneself than in God or in his servants. It also means to put the things of the world above the things of God. Prideful people take honor to themselves rather than giving God the glory. Pride is competitive. Those who are prideful seek to have more and presume they are better than other people. Pride usually results in feelings of anger and hatred and is a great stumbling block. So will you humble yourself before Heavenly Father and put your total trust in him, knowing that this pandemic is in his hands and that your delay in your mission is in his hands and that he's all is, all is well. I uh, thank goodness I'm the oldest guy in the group. At least I think I am. And, and in my years on life, I have always found, always, always, always found that when I humble myself and say, Heavenly Father, I don't like what's happening right now in my life, but I trust Thee, and I will continue to pray. I'll continue to be in my scriptures. I don't like what's happening, to be honest with Thee, because you can't pray a lie to Heavenly Father, right? Um, but but uh, help me to understand line upon line, here a little, there a little. And once I have that kind of patience, the picture at the very end of the tunnel, the end of the, 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 the what happened comes to fruition. I know why Heavenly Father did it. I don't know it now, but down the road I will. And there's a lot of things I don't think I'm going to know until I'm dead. And I hope that's not anytime soon. Do your best to be humble servants of Heavenly Father, trusting in Him that this is His will and this is the way He wants things to do in, in His kingdom. And I say it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Such a pleasure being with all of you today. Um, Oh, Elder Mannion, would you mind praying? I've got to get as much out of you as I can. What time do you leave on? You leave on Tuesday, yes? Yeah, Tuesday morning. Where do you go? Where, where do you? I fly to Atlanta first, and then I fly to Florida. Huh. Just like that, huh? Well, yeah. we're going to miss you. I won't miss you, but I, it's a good thing. I'll <laughs> see you. I'll see when I see you. Would you mind saying our closing prayer? Yeah, for sure. Our loving, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we could gather this day as uh, missionaries preparing to go out again. We're so grateful for the presence of the Spirit that has been with us, and we ask and pray that that would bless us with um, the gift of humility, that we can be able to apply these um, principles um, better in our lives. We're so grateful for thee and for thy Son, Jesus Christ, for his atonement that he did for us. And we ask that that would um, strengthen us and help us to um, remain worthy and, and strong in the gospel um, throughout our lives, that we can bless the lives of those around us. Father, we're so grateful for all these things, and we ask and pray that I would bless our families and those that are struggling in these times. And we ask and we pray for these things most humbly in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Aloha, Elder Mannion. I will see you again. And Elder Wright, send us a hint. Aloha. Love you all.